Oh, God. Awesome. Guys, I, well, first of all, I've got some time, so thank you to everyone who puts this thing on and everyone. They, aren't they awesome, right? Okay, no, I, I know I'm going, I'm going, so awesome, right? Um, <laughs> I'm so nervous and excited to be up here. Um, so my first thought, right, and I'm just going to throw through a bunch of thoughts. My first thought is that language is a really neat thing, okay? Language is this communal effort where we try to make sense of and ascribe order to the world around us, right? And the fact that we do that as a community is really neat to me. So the second idea is that numbers are just this really beautiful form of language. Anyone, regardless of ethnicity or nationality, knows that that's two really damn cute puppies, right? And it's scientifically proven that one, the number one, is like the loneliest number that you'll ever do. So, so we've got this universal language that now has afforded us the power to ascribe order to this chaos around us. And I think that's wonderful, right? And with this power, we've plumbed the edges of creation. And we found some really, really interesting stuff that I'm not going to talk about. Um, what I do want to talk about, though, and from an armchair perspective, what I think is really neat is this idea of ratios, okay? Things start to get really interesting when you use numbers to explain the relationship between things. In this case, peanut butter and jelly to make the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? We also use this thing called pi, for example, to describe the ratio, the relationship of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Nobody's going to give it up for pi? <laughs> ah, all right. But what I want to talk about is phi, which I think is a far more interesting ratio. So here's phi in 15 seconds. Okay. You take a line, you divide it in half, the ratio of the whole line, which in this case is A plus B, into the relationship of A is the same as the ratio of the larger segment A to the smaller segment B, or 1.618 something. Okay, but all you need to remember for this presentation is that phi, or that phi is this infinitely complex number that we basically know that we, we're smart enough to know that we know that we'll never know what this number is, all right? But it shouldn't be daunting, because if you take out your arm, right, take out your arm, and put out your hand, the ratio of your fingernail to your first joint, that's phi, and the first joint to the second joint, phi, second joint to third joint, phi. Wrist to elbow is phi. In fact, once you start looking at it, this ratio is everywhere in the cosmos, right? It ascribes the way that hurricanes develop, to the way that the planets are interrelated, to the way that organisms develop, to the double helix of your DNA. It even circumscribes the way that galaxies are formed, right? And to me, as a deist, there's something that's just infinitely clever about that joke, that here is this number that is just language, right, that is just a communal effort to understand the world around us that we know that we're smart enough to know that we'll never know. And its fingerprints are everywhere. But when I'm not thinking about these lofty thoughts, my mind drifts to paper. Specifically, why eight and a half by 11? I mean, what, what, what's up with that? It didn't, it didn't used to be like that, right? Like back in the day, I mean, way, way back in the day, we used the golden ratio. It was viewed as a way to divinely organize things, right? So phi was informed the construction of paper and the way ink laid out on paper and the design on paper, right? And like the Gutenberg Bible, right? Measured by the golden ratio. And when you cast your vision past North America in the modern world, Everyone else in the whole world is still using a standard that's developed by some that has its roots in phi, in, in phi right? When you accident, so like when you accidentally select A4 and to print your documents and select European paper size, that's based upon the Lichtenberg ratio, which is square root of 2, which is not exactly phi, but it's sort of the same thing. Okay, but not so much in America, because in 1921, Herbert Hoover came up with the program for the industrial, the elimination of waste in industry. And he made a committee called the Committee for the Simplification of Paper Sizes. And so basically what we did is we took a whole bunch of people from the paper industry, put them inside a room to standardize paper sizes, and said, hey, find us something that maximizes profit and minimizes waste and allows for the least amount of tinkering to, with all the equipment that we've already got. And to me, there's something universally sad and telling about that thought, right, that we are willing as a nation to make this utilitarian bargain, 
where we sacrifice beauty and the opportunity to surround ourselves with something, with this medium that could point back to the very roots of creation itself in exchange for utility and profit. And so am I saying that by re-examining paper sizes in North America that we could start humanity on this inexorable path towards self-enlightenment, transcendentalment, and peace? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>